Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're starting our project off down here at the garden center because they just got in another big beautiful load of herbs and perennials and it is currently like slushing outside. Is that what we would call it, slushing? Yes. Kind of snowing slash Yeah, I'm raining. saying it with a bad attitude. Me too. We woke up to a white snow floor this morning and thankfully it's getting warm enough to where it's melted off for the most part, but seeing these plants really elevates one's spirits. I think, <laughs> in weather like this. So a lot of this program, uh, there's an Herborama program, which, you know, is herbs. And then there's a whole bunch of perennials, but they do split flats. So you don't have to buy an entire 18 count of the same kind of perennial. You can buy nine of each. And that way you can try out a whole bunch of different things. So do you know how many varieties of herbs you have here? No. A lot. I do know Look that I this. have 75 flats of split perennials. So I have 150 varieties of just perennials. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So and a ton yeah. of herbs. They look so fresh and pretty. They do. So we are going to be planting up a green stock vertical garden today with herbs. So our goal is to find 30 different types of herbs to fill in the 30 pockets on that vertical garden. Plus, we'll take a look at everything else down here. And just in case you're wondering, these big old tubs full of murky looking water. This is good water. It is with root stimulator it's got in it. It's in it. And it's waiting for our David Austin roses, which are on the road right now. Oh, they are. Yep. We've oh, got, nice. I don't know. 500 or oh. I don't know how many a lot yeah a lot yeah. so the bare root roses get soaked in the tubs full of water that have all the vitamins and stuff and the stuff yeah. in it yeah. um and then they are potted up so that's what yeah. those are so we're going to do our best to get in here now these perennials are all grown cold right they are they are so they are just hardy they're rooted in really stout mm -hmm. I mean for this time of year mm -hmm. the root development is beautiful yeah I so. mean case in point <laughs> look at that these plants are healthy and robust. I like it because when they're grown like this, they're not um, wiggly in their pots. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes a stem will come up and the whole plant just wants to tip? Yeah. These are not like that. This grower is amazing. This, these are from yeah. Blooming Nursery. Blooming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think what we'll do is start at this table and just work our way around the room. I'm not sure that we're gonna go through every single variety because what did she say? 150 varieties of just perennials alone. Yeah. And then all the herbs. Okay. A lot. So let's just look at some of these that are really catching my eye. Right here, there's campanulas. Anything that's got a purple flower on it. We've got Rapido Blue and Tellum Beauty. So, so pretty. Oh, there's a bee balm here. Jacob Klein. There's a couple varieties, it looks like, of Coreopsis. A couple more poppies right there. Oh, Blue Diamond Status, that's gorgeous. And Silver Carpet, The Snow in Summer. Oh, this I love. Okay, look at this sedum. Oh, it's so cute. This is a di Divergence sedum, and it's right next to the Angelina. Really bright chartreuse. Down here, there's some Primrose. There's uh, some Alpi Ooh, Alpine Calament. This is one I'm gonna have to get, I think. Closely related to time. Huh, that's really interesting. There's also a yarrow called Brass Buttons. That is so cute. Look at the flower. It looks like a Sugar Shack button bush bloom. And then, oh, Excelsior and Strawberry Foxglove. There's some loose strife here. That's really pretty, Beaujolais. And some Pincushion Flower, Beaujolais Bonnet and some columbine, which I like this color, Biedermeyer, and rock crests, already in bloom. What, are you over there smelling all the plants? I'm trying to figure out which mint I want. I want spearmint. Oh. I don't know if we've got spearmint yet. What's that one? This is French peppermint. Ooh. That's what I'm smelling right now. Oh, let me smell. Smell it. Oh, yum. Yeah. yeah. It's like good classic peppermint mm, smell. Yummy, yeah. But spearmint's my favorite for like putting in tea. Oh, sure. Oh, I like this. That is Acetum Lydium. Oh, that is really pretty. And it's next door to some Pine Forest Sedum and some John Creech Sedum. That is so pretty. And then there's Hollyhocks right here. There's some of the Glorious Black and then Mars Magic. There's more Sedum right here. Uh, there's the, ooh, I don't know how to say that. Shurnakolevi, Shun, whatever. <laughs> And then Antique Grill Sedum, Winter Green Fest, and what, what is up with these names? 
Why in Stefaner? Why in Stefaner? Golden Sedum. Is it really ne is it necessary? Some of these plant names. <laughs> Here is a golden creeping Jenny, beautiful, and I love this. This is blue star creeper, and it's an evergreen zone, hardy to zone five. That's beautiful. There's the giant flowered chives right back there. Cotu what's Cotula? That looks like chamomile. Cotula, feathery light green foliage. Matte supports wiry stems topped by gold. Button flowers. Evergreen. Huh. That's an interesting one. Oh, you've got your collection. Yeah, so far. Um, I'm going to start with a pot of chives. Let me see. Just regular classic oh, chives. so pretty. Yeah. And then I want to get more like hardy herbs in the garden beds this year. Mm -hmm. So I can have them a little bit longer through the season. So I'm going to plant thyme in a couple spots. Are they both the same kind? They are. What is this one? Winter thyme. Oh, winter thyme. Because I like that one for cooking. It's just a regular. I don't really like the ones that have like flavors, yeah. scents in them. I just want regular thyme and then just a good oregano. Nice. So, and now I want to wait until we get spearmint and burgart and sage. Uh-huh. So wouldn't burgart and sage be pretty in front of my poet's wife roses? Yes. Blue with yellow? Yep. That's kind of very nice. Plan. Yeah. So, Both soft colors. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for now, I think this will be good. Nice. Okay. We're going to carry on. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, first off, there's some color down here. These are the English daisies that are oh so sweet. There's some buttery yellow dianthus right there. This one's a golden sun. Oh, I like this one. This is the lavender scented thyme. There's some yarrow. There's some curry, dwarf curry. We'll probably get one of those. There's parsley and galardia, goblin galardia. We've got catnip, oh mercy. This would go over real great at our house. Um, there's some of the guardian delphiniums. There's guardian lavender and guardian blue. Gloxinia flowered foxglove and then the pure white foxglove. Gosh, I love this sedum right here. It just looks like a something you just wanna boop boop. And it is soft. Oh, you guys, there's Lamium. This is one of my favorite ground covers ever. And Greenway. Is there another variety on here? Oh, somebody already bought it. <laughs> Whatever was on here. Purple Frost Sedum. There's some Golden Oregano. We'll probably get one of those too. Those are always so pretty. More Sedum up here. There's Roman Chamomile. Black Pearl Sedum. Ooh, there's Mint. What is this one? Grapefruit Mint. Oh, that's pretty. There's the dark leaf oregano like Monica just had. And some chives, there's borage. What is this one? Spanish mint. Oh yes, deep blue clips campanula. I just love campanula ground cover. Um, yeah, see this one grows six inches tall by eight to 12 inches wide. Uh, tolerates moist soil, hardy to zone three. Bonnie Jean rosemary, which is a zone seven. Hardy to zero. Ooh, spicy orange thyme right there. There's a white campanula. Orange balsam thyme. Ooh, sorrel, we need to get some of that. Some French sorrel, we can make some excellent soup and dips with this one. The tr trinig, I don't know how to say that, trinig chamomile. There's some calendula, that'd be a beautiful one, even though it's not technically, I mean, technically is it an herb? Edible flower. There's a curled parsley, more beautiful lamium. The white Nancy, I love that, pink pewter. Mahogany bee balm two to three feet tall. I was going to say, is that a ground cover? Doesn't that look like a ground cover? But it gets tall. There's the Cape Blanco sedum right here. Isn't that beautiful? And then what kind of mint? Moroccan mint right here. Mm. Oh, there's a sage, the grower's friend garden sage right there. And then this lobelia, starship blue. I think I might grab some of these. These are awesome in the garden. Cilantro. There's the winter thyme and the Grosso lavender, white French lavender. There's some white borage here, which I'm actually not sure I have seen just a strictly white blooming borage. That's really cool. And then there's a Persian mint right here and some beautiful black scallop ajuga, which Brittany just pulled some for her own garden. <laughs> what else do you have? Some beautiful sedum? Yeah. This, which uh, kind? Sedum I love that one. It looks like a sea creature. Yes, it does. I dig it. That's really cool. <laughs> And then there's the Ogon Sedum, which kind of like the Ogon Acarus, same color. All right, so we just have these shelves to look at now. Golden Lemon Thyme, that's beautiful. There's, oh, Swiss Ricola, that's actually my favorite mint. So we'll grab some of that today. Hot and Spicy Oregano. 
more calendula this is the orange flash isn't that beautiful it's like a soft orange yellow queen columbine there's the tequila sunrise columbine leprechaun gold columbine got a bunch of that in our garden halo golden viola and then etain viola gold ball alyssum there's the woodland strawberry right here right there and then hen and chicks look gorgeous and last couple of shelves here there's the early carnival saxifrage always a huge fan of that fred bouton lavender this is the halo lilac viola and then there's some Rudbeckia over there, as well as, looks like some lamb's ear. Is that right? I can barely see it. Yeah. Oh, that's a little guy. How cute. Silky fleece lamb's ear. There's some thrift down here, which I just love. This is the red leaved. And then there's Dusseldorf Pride. Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf Pride. Queen Victoria Lobelia. Now that one's got bright red blooms. That beautiful foliage. Tall purple lobelia. Ooh, might be another one we need to grab. Creeping Veronica, getting more of that this year. Georgia Blue Speedwell, beautiful ground covers. There's some more delphiniums, purple and white, more yarrow. Not about does it. Isn't it fun to see all of these brand new fresh plants? Oh, it makes me feel like spring is closer even though it's snowing outside right now. Oh, so now we need to pick out 30 for our green stock and then we'll take them home. cold to have that door open. That's it, that's 30. Let's get them home and then we can take a look at all the different varieties. We made it back home. I just checked the thermostat. It's 72 degrees in here right now, still snowing outside. So a beautiful day to spend out here in the greenhouse. And we got a beautiful, beautiful bunch of plants. I'm so excited about this project. Look at all of these, you guys. Isn't this just the most wonderful sight to behold? I, th I think it is. Oh, okay, so let's start on this side and just work our way over. You'll notice I did pull out all the tags and all of the uh, price tags and ID tags, I save them because the backs are blank and I can use them as ID tags in seed starting trays. So these will go right over here. Okay, let's start with this one right here. This is the Creeping Veronica. Grows one inch tall by 18 inch spread and it's hardy down to zone four, so negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and it can take more moist soil. But the thing I like the most about it, it's not even the blooms, which the blooms are gorgeous. You can see them there on the tag, uh, but it looks like this all year. Winter time, uh, summertime, it's this bright, glossy, fresh looking green. And when we were out walking earlier this winter, uh, there was like patchy snow on the ground and I saw this plant just shining from its little spot in the garden. I just thought, you know, I need to pick more of that up when I see it. So I was thrilled that they had this in the load and I didn't take them all. There's still a few left if you're local. <laughs> also, you can see it's a full to part sun loving plant. It blooms in the springtime and a lot of people use this as a lawn substitute. It can take light foot traffic. I mean, if you have kids and dogs playing on the grass, it probably wouldn't handle that. But if you've got a lawn that doesn't see a ton, ton of traffic, I think this would be a great option. Okay, so the next one here, full sun loving blue star creeper, Laurentia, Laurentia. I, I don't know much about this plant and that's why I bought it because I thought it would be a really fun one to try. It looks an awful lot like the Creeping Veronica. It's not quite as brilliant green, but it looks like there's a ton of new leaves. 
This one is also evergreen, not as cold hardy, I don't think. Yeah, hardy to zone five, and it grows two to four inches tall, so it's gonna grow a little bit taller than our Creeping Veronica. This one is supposedly longer blooming though, like May through September, and it's a really good one to use in between paver stones. I think that'd be a really beautiful evergreen option. Okay, before we move into this section, the middle's kind of the herbs, I'm gonna jump over to this side of the table because we've got a couple more just perennial type plants, not herbs that are gonna be going in our vertical garden. Uh, we've got the Alpine Calament, which we looked at when we were down there. And this is another one that I just wasn't familiar with. Again, it's an evergreen, like sun to part shade. will grow a little bit taller than the other two we just looked at. Four to eight inches tall and eight to 12 inches wide. It is drought tolerant. It attracts insects. Apparently it's fragrant when it blooms. Which one does it bloom? Most of the summer. Excellent. I like anything that will bloom most of the summer. And then I did snag a few of these tall purple lobelia because they're just gorgeous plants and hummingbirds love them and these are hardy to zone five two feet tall by 18 inch spread and they've just got a really pleasing uh kind of clumping looking growth habit here and then toward the back of this we've got the lavender mint which is so delicious smelling that's a childhood smell for me it just takes me right back oh it smells so good and then the swiss ricola mint is my favorite mint yeah absolute favorite mint of all time it is so sweet smelling you know how some mints can smell a little weedy if that makes sense this or like grassy this one smells like sweet mint like i could just eat it maybe i can oh yeah mm. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's move on to the other plants here, our herbs. We've got a couple of different varieties of parsley. We've got the triple curled right here. It's just a little plant right now, but really fresh looking. We've got the Italian flat leaf right here. I like to have one of each. I don't use a tremendous amount of parsley, but I use it enough that it's nice to have a fresh plant. Uh, we've got a dwarf curry, which not only is this plant gorgeous to look at, but it smells exactly like curry. Oh, it just smells so good. And to be quite honest, I've never used this herb to actually cook with, but it does say, though curry is a blend of spices, this herb offers a similar flavor and can be used to flavor meats and other types of dishes. So it'll be fun to try it. It is a zone eight though. It's only hardy to 10. Uh, so it's one that I would have to leave in here, which if I leave my green stock, if I leave the other one I'm planting today in here, we should be good to go. French sorrel right here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's a very thick leaf, like a little thicker than spinach almost. And it's really good. Hardy to zone three. We used to do three seminars every single year when I was working down at the garden center. Uh, my mom did them for years and years and years, just three, one a month, like March, April, and May. But one of them was always centered on herbs. And I remember every time, we, that time of year would roll around, we'd ask my mom what kind of herbs she was going to focus on. And one year, sorrel was one of them. And so Monica and I did some searching uh, and testing and we tried out Maybe I can find the recipes, but there was a sorrel dip. It was like a either cream cheese, sour cream. There's a bunch of herbs and sorrel in there. It was so good. And then we did a sorrel soup that was also really good. And I was very skeptical uh, because soups with that sort of base for me is not usually an attractive thing, but it was really, really tasty. Beginning of the next row, I got two chives. There was a couple I did repeats of because they're plants I use a lot of. So we've got the two chives. I did a couple of the Roman chamomile because I wanna do more with those this year. And I did get one of the Trenig, which I think is a lower growing, two to four inch tall, eight to 12 inch spread, evergreen. And then this is a taller one at, oh no, no, not super tall, three to six inches tall, eight to 12 inch spread. But these smell to me, when you kind of rough up their leaves, they smell just like bubble gum. <laughs> I love it. And then we are gonna tuck in one of the calendula, one of the orange flash, because I think it would be nice to have a, a nice bloom in there. And calendula is a trap crop for aphids. So if you don't want any of your plants to get aphids, just plant calendula nearby. Calendula or Brussels sprouts um, or Nicotiana. Those three work wonders to keep aphids off everything else. Uh, next row, we've got dwarf marjoram here which these are perfect. Most of these stay on the smaller side, which makes them a perfect candidate for a situation like we are gonna put them in, but six to 12 inches tall, 12 to 24 inches wide, uh, drought tolerant. I don't think I have a marjoram anywhere. So I'm looking forward to that. I actually had to buy some the other day. And I was honestly a little bit disappointed. I came out here and I looked and I thought, 
surely, surely I have marjoram out here somewhere and I do not. So anyway, had to buy a whole thing of dried marjoram for one recipe. So I'll be happy to have this plant. And then we've got the Vietnamese coriander right here, which is a very pretty plant. It can be used as a substitute for cilantro, but you can see the leaves are shaped clearly different than a cilantro is right behind it. But it's got a little burgundy kind of swoosh in the middle, like an arc. And I just think it's a pretty plant. And it doesn't get huge, like one by one, one foot by one foot. It is a zone nine though. So definitely one that has to stay here in the greenhouse. We've got our cilantro, which honestly, I hardly ever buy the plants of cilantro because they're so easy to grow from seed. But since we're only just planting up one pocket, this will be nice. And you just wanna make sure to harvest it regularly to keep it from bolting. And then we've got the grower's friend, Sage, which wants to grow upwards of two by two. So a little bit of a larger one, we'll have to keep the growth in check. And I don't use Sage a ton, but enough to merit having a plant for sure. Bonnie Jean Rosemary, and rosemaries, no matter what size the tag says they're gonna get, are easy to keep size checked. I mean, they're easy to make into topiary forms, so this will be great. And then here we've got several different varieties of oregano, six varieties. Hopley's Purple, grows 18 by 18, drought tolerant. You can kind of see the difference in growth habit and color from all the rest. This one, the Hopley's Purple, looks the closest to the dark leaf oregano, which grows about 18 inches tall by 15 inches wide, so a little bit smaller. But then we've got the Dwarf Greek oregano here. Look at that, nice little tight mound. Grows four inches by 16 inches wide. And this one's an evergreen right here, zone five. The Golden Oregano right here grows like three to four inches tall, 18 inch spread, also an evergreen. Hot and spicy oregano can grow eh, like one to two feet tall and wide. And then we have the Sicilian oregano, which wants to grow like 18 inches tall, 12 to 18 inches wide. It's got a really pretty kind of purpley red stem. And then we've got our seven varieties of thyme because who doesn't need seven varieties of thyme? <laughs> Six varieties of oregano. We've got spicy orange, nice tight growth habit. I love this one, the lavender scented thyme. Look at the growth on this one. It looks kind of like, I don't even know, like a little under the sea-esque, so cool. There's the caraway thyme, winter thyme, most upright so far, the golden lemon thyme, always love to have those. We've got the silver lemon thyme right here, dot wells thyme, and narrow leaf French thyme. And that is our load from today. What a great haul. I'm gonna grab our green stock, which is sitting right in front of me, right here. I think we've got all the pieces and parts here. I think we're just gonna set it up right next to the other ones. These we've focused strawberry production in. You can see how many blooms they've got. And we've been harvesting and the, the berries are tasting a lot more sweet lately. I would say like the latter part of December and January, the strawberries kept on producing in here, but you know, it wasn't ever super, super warm and they didn't get really soft. They still had that flavor, uh, but now they're starting to improve and starting to taste better. And Samantha keeps these pretty much cleaned off. She comes out here and, and eats them all. And then this one right here, we do have a few herbs in, but I like to grow seeds in this one. So we started lettuce and spinach in here, which I need to harvest and cut a lot of this back and give some to the chickens. Anyway, it'll be nice to have one that's 100% dedicated to herbs. So let's get it set up. Okay, so here's our first level right here. You can see the little spinner. And then all we do is put our first planting reservoir right here. You can see that there are six pockets per level and there are five levels, so 30 planting pockets total. And I know it looks kind of weird how I placed it, but we're about ready to bring in another table right here for annuals and seed production, that kind of thing. So I wanted to make sure it's off to the side so we don't have to scoot it. I like to plant each level as I go. So I put the first one down, we're gonna plant it up quick, and then we'll do the next level and plant it and all the way up to the top. First level all planted up with six varieties of thyme. I'm so excited about this. We actually ended up with eight. I thought we only had seven varieties. <laughs> There's Russell. 
Uh, so I'm leaving the tags in for everything we plant today so we don't forget, especially because there's so many you know, times and so many oregano's that we're gonna be working with. So you just fill up the reservoir with soil, plant your stuff, and then you put your water tray in. So each level needs a water tray and this will fill up with water and there are six holes. I like to line the holes up with each one of the planting pockets. So this tray, once it's filled, it'll slowly drip water to <laughs> irrigate, <laughs> Russell, to irrigate, drip irrigate the root system of each one of your plants. So see that top layer right there, this right here, you just come along uh, once a day or however often you're watering, it's once a day in the summer for us, and you fill it to this top line. It takes one minute to fill it. And then all the water from this reservoir gets distributed to each one of the layers. So each one of the watering trays. So it's just to set the hose in there for one minute and then it waters all 30 of your plants. And they do have all the parts so you can set it up on an automatic irrigation system if you want. Like it'll automatically go on um, once a day or twice a day or however, however often you're having to water yours depending on the time of year. I think we set one up, was it last spring on a drip irrigation system? It worked really well. So now with our second layer, we're going to gently, try not to smash anything, make sure all of my tags are out, but it lines up in between each one of the planting pockets. Yeah, it just rests right like that. So all we need to do is put some soil in there and do the same thing with the rest of our plants. We're all done planting and I just filled this top reservoir with water and you can see that once it gets down to a certain level, like there's a little bump up in the center so that not all the water goes down because there are also six holes in this tray that feed the top level right here. But today I am going to be watering them all in just in their individual pockets as well, just to make sure all the soil is settled in properly. It's completely done now. I did put the lid on. You can see that you don't have to put a lid on it, but there are lids um, that you can put on them if you've got them outside in particular so you know junk doesn't blow in here. And then you can put your hose in right here. Uh, but let's go through the levels. We've got on the top level all the things that I thought could potentially get the tallest. That way, you know, kind of like this right here, it's got room to go upward. So we've got cilantro, sorrel, we've got our sage, another sorrel, uh, rosemary, and our calendula. Second row down, we have Roman chamomile. There's the curry. There's another Roman chamomile, the coriander, the trinig chamomile, and dwarf marjoram. Third level down, we have the dwarf Greek oregano. All of these are oregano. So this is the Hopley's purple, Sicilian, hot and spicy, dark leaf, and golden. And then this level, we've got chives. Chives is pretty easy because even though they can get tall, they're usually so slender uh, that they work 
in lower levels. Case in point, right there. You can see some tribes. You can also see a rosemary in bloom and a sage. That's a Burgarten sage right there. Anyway, then we've got our Italian parsley, golden leaf thyme, chives, triple curl parsley, lavender scented thyme. And then on our bottom level, we have the six varieties of thyme, the spicy orange, winter, caraway, dot wells, silver lemon, and narrow leaf French. So there we have it, 30 brand new herbs that we get to use in our cooking this season. And then we can just keep it in here potentially. Uh, we may not even move it out and then it can just live in here throughout next winter. Most herbs do real well going through a winter. So I'm looking very much so forward to this. And another fun thing, I now have 28 empty containers that I can pot up some of our little geranium. So that is what we are gonna do to finish off today's project. Almost enough. Russell. 28 more down and the rest of the things that I picked up today they're just going to hang out here in the greenhouse until we can plant them outside um, but I did separate them in their flats so they all have room to breathe it's way easier to water them when they're like that as well there's just nothing quite like the excitement when plants start to show up down at the garden center it means another year is just getting started and the plants are fresh and beautiful and this makes me so excited. And I'm really looking forward to giving you progress updates as the days progress, the season progresses. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.